restless, settle down on an endless journey, enigmatic level, home on the road, survival difficulty, class habitable, safe, devoid of harmful entities, enigmatic topology. Home on the road is the colloquial term used for an enigmatic level consisting of indefinite RVs driving on a straight four-lane highway. Image caption, an old Class B camper near the edge of the road. Vehicles, these driverless vehicles travel autonomously, changing lanes or accelerating at any given moment. While it is possible to commandeer the vehicles, it is very difficult to derail them. The steering wheels barely turn, and pressing on the pedals results in only a small speed change. Hence, the most efficient way of travel in this level is quote-unquote trailer hopping, see below. There are endless variations of RVs, campers, trailers, and caravans present. However, they can be classified into three groups based on their capacity and size. Being designed as living quarters, all trailers possess sleeping spaces and varying quantities of food and water. Footnote. Sustenance replenishes slowly, so it's usually advised to keep moving from one vehicle to the next. End footnote. Class C. Image caption. Class C motorhome. 30 to 46 percent. Footnote. This is a calculated estimate, and footnote, of all vehicles on the level are Class C. They can host one to two people. These are often small, outdated, or malfunctioning. Nevertheless, they offer a relatively clean bed and toilet, which are usually hard to come by in the back rooms. Lighting and electricity may not work. Food resources are often scarce or stale. A mini-fridge or microwave is uncommon. Basic seats and tables. Class B. Image caption. Class B motorhome. 54 to 60 percent of the vehicles are Class B and can host three to five people. These are standard, comfortable RVs with multiple sleeping places and various resources. Functional electricity and water stocked fridge, microwave, and bathroom, may have electrical stoves, ovens, and other appliances, separated sleeping areas, tables, couches, and seating space. Class A. Image caption. Class A motorhome. Less than 5% of vehicles are Class A. They can host 4 to 7 people and are fancier than most people's homes. Fully stocked kitchen fridge, freezer, oven, appliances, large bathrooms with shower, comfy beds and sofas. Some even have amenities, such as ambient lighting, jacuzzi baths, or a private bar. Luxury vehicles are highly valuable and therefore coveted. They are usually completely ransacked by previous wanderers or barricaded and defended by the current inhabitants. Topology Image caption, diagram sketched by Meg Explorer Evan Bauzite. Regardless of interior design, every trailer possesses an exit on the left wall and one on the right wall. Each exit is connected to the nearest external vehicle. Footnote, an exit is linked to exclusively one other exit at a time. End footnote such that all the interior spaces of the vehicles merge into one combined non-Euclidean topology, thus opening a door that would typically lead to the outside road leads to the inside of another vehicle. This occurs seamlessly, as if they were two rooms in a house. Sound waves behave similarly. In fact, knocking on an exit door would be heard loud and clear in the other vehicle. Since the individual spaces are dynamic, the integrated topological space is also dynamic. This gives the possibility of traveling from vehicle to vehicle, a technique called quote-unquote trailer hopping. 
To explain this, view the diagram shown on the screen. Assuming one is located in vehicle A0, then, going through the left door leads inside vehicle B. Going through the right door leads inside vehicle C. If vehicle A0 moves into position VA1, either spontaneously or by man-made efforts, then the right door leads inside vehicle D. Going through the left door leads outside, because now the edge of the road is closer than vehicle B. If an exit door connects to the external landscape, then jumping out results in an instant noclip out of the level. For this reason, it is impossible footnote, see the addendum report for speculation, and footnote, to climb off or on top of vehicles. Trailer hopping should be executed prudently and hastily. All vehicles are moving unpredictably at high speeds, so a moment's hesitation could prove deadly. If the state of the quote-unquote nearest vehicle changes while one stands within the doorway, they will be torn apart, with the half of their body that was on the other side of the doorway transported to the other vehicle. Communities and Outposts Image Caption Asset EL13A6 up for sale by the BNTG There haven't been many large communities catalogued, but that may be due to the dynamic nature of the level. A large extended family of 12 people occupies three adjacent RVs. They are friendly and very knowledgeable about the level. Footnote, even Bowsite got a lot of his information from Matteo, the family's father, who is a mathematician. End footnote. The BNTG has secured several Class A and Elite Class B trailers and is selling them as assets. There are rumors of a UEC outpost that goes around booby-trapping other trailers with explosives. Due to the unpredictable behavior of both the vehicles and wanderers, it is advised to exercise caution when trailer hopping. Check for hidden traps or hostile campers. Lock or barricade the exits if you plan to stay for a while. Stock up on resources. Don't. Stay in the same vehicle for too long. Neglect a good night's sleep in a proper bed. Worry about anything seen outside the windows. Footnote. The faces cannot hurt you if they are outside. End footnote. Landscapes. Through the windows of the RV one is currently in, one can see the highway, other vehicles, and a sprawling landscape. The only consistent part of the exterior is the highway, which stretches on indefinitely. However, the landscapes beyond the edge of the road are mutable and usually resemble vast, natural environments. Landscapes have been observed to change every morning, sometimes imperceptibly, other times radically. The daytime has been recorded to last between 12 to 24 hours, while the night lasts roughly 6 to 12 hours. The night gets darker and bluer until, quote-unquote, Stygian midnight, a brief moment characterized by pitch darkness that is simultaneously saturated blue. Footnote. Researchers theorize this to be a true glimpse into the blue channel. End footnote. Any windows will appear impossibly black and blue, and, although fascinating, this chimeric color is straining to look at for too long. There is an ongoing debate about whether or not the landscape is a true component of the level. An old theory claimed that the exterior didn't exist at all, and that the windows and vehicles merely displayed the illusion of an outside space. The fact is, wanderers can only exist within the combined interior spaces of all vehicles, making such the true level space. The current theory hypothesizes that this level traverses through other levels, which are visualized as an exterior landscape, and that the Stygian Midnight phenomenon is actually the level slipping into the blue channel to then, quote-unquote, phase into the next level. Addendum Report Addendum Report 11-6-2022 
The following is a brief report submitted by Name Redacted for Anonymity, who was present in the subject level for a period of 18 days. Footnote. According to the level's day-slash-night cycle, I was gradually hopping between vehicles, trying to find a nice one to camp in, when I heard sounds like footsteps, except coming from above, as if they were on the roof of my caravan. They passed from the front to the back, so I couldn't see who or what had made that sound. Later that night, in a different RV, I think I saw through the windshield two figures standing on the trailer several meters ahead of mine. It was dark, but I'm pretty certain there was something on top of the vehicle. How do you even do that? If it was two people, they were very close, perhaps hugging. The next morning, I checked the surrounding cars, but nobody was there. I only noticed an engraving on the ceiling. 23-9-2022 Update Recent megatests have attempted to climb atop vehicles, but all have failed. 14-1-2023 Update This report has been largely dismissed as a visual hallucination, with incomplete evidence. However, some wanderers like to believe it has ties to an urban legend, native to the level Home on the Road. Redirection to a tale. Hand, an unmovable hand. She hangs fingers around her neck. If you see a young woman with her right digits sliced off, do not panic. She carries the severed fingers of her lover around her neck. Let her pass. She will not hurt you. She is only searching for her love. Maybe we were too good to be true. How ridiculous was that? We were too happy? Did the universe not allow so much joy to be held by only two people? We were barely adults when Penny and I met, yet we spent the best years of our lives together. Even when we wound up in the back rooms, we held our own, wandering and working together. What do we do wrong, if not be perfect for each other? I remember how optimistic we were as we passed through camper vans and RVs and caravans, as if choosing which one to settle in and call home. One with many windows, she preferred. We'd have plants, and especially sunflowers, her favorite. We browsed through these mobile homes like through the rooms at Ikea, pointing out our favorite carpets, the color of the kitchen, the size of the sofa. For a carefree moment, I believed it. Despite this absurd reality, we could finally have a normal future together. But the vehicles move unpredictably. One moment we're crossing the threshold, me in one room and her in the next, her hands clasped between us. Then, in the blink of an eye, she's gone. The interior switches to a completely different vehicle, and she is whisked away into the previous car, along with half of my left hand. All that remains with me are the fingers of her hand that I was holding. Blood sprays. A scream rips out from my mouth. Penelope! Outside the window, I saw the vehicles weave back and forth with each other. A herd of countless, mindless cars. One of them held the love of my life. Shock spurred me into action, and I leapt into the next vehicle. Desperation possessed me, coursed through my veins like lightning, and reverberated in my head like thunder. I stormed through door after door, raced day and night, and left no stone unturned in my path. I wouldn't eat nor sleep, all rationale abandoned for the hope in my head repeating, She's in the next vehicle. She must have gone in that one. For sure, she's in the next one. The next one. The next. The next. But such a hurricane would have ripped me apart too. After passing ten, forty, maybe eighty empty cars, my unbridled tempest dimmed to a contained storm cloud. I had reached a locked row. All the vehicles in each lane were currently driving in parallel, and there was no way to clip forwards. With no choice but to wait for a break in formation, I entered a luxury trailer and barricaded the exits. I devoured half the fridge before collapsing from exhaustion. For two days, I slept. In my dreams, all I saw was the face of my love. 
It was too good to be true. I woke up, clutching my severed hand. I cried and cried, until I felt as if my soul had entirely leaked out of my eyes. Her absence hurt more than that of my fingers. I try to sleep when I can, but not too much, lest I wish to never wake up again. A bolt of lightning crackles deep inside. That part of me is still screaming her name. Like our beloved sunflower, I won't rest until I see her. My son. Only then will her rays melt my storm. So endlessly, I search for her. I systematically go through each vehicle, row per row, and advance forwards. I mark every car I visit, a large circle with the letter U in it, engraved on the ceiling with my Swiss army knife. I used to also write the date of my arrival, but I've lost track of time. Days and months blur into each other. Landscapes transform outside the window. The pitch blue night reminds me of how she hated navy blue, yet I loved wearing it. I wonder if it's even real. One day, I came across an engraving of the letter P on the wall. Of course, we'd both mark our presence in the same way. We've always been on the same wavelength. One night, I thought I saw her, standing on the roof of a vehicle in the distance, looking for me, even though it's impossible to exit. I'm losing my mind. It doesn't matter. This is the only reality I know. Time doesn't matter. The wanderers I encounter, from the ones who are scared to the ones who think they're not scared, doesn't matter. I may have lost everything, but I am not ruthless. Those who attack me are merely protecting their loved ones. And I understand now, because all that matters is her. All I know is to search the car, enter the next one, search the car, enter the next one. All I know is to call her name. Penelope. I know she is out there, calling mine. Ulysses. I refuse to die without seeing her again. If you see a young man with his left digit sliced off, do not panic. I carry the severed fingers of my lover around my neck. Let me pass. I will not hurt you. I am only searching for my love. Isn't everybody. But not everybody is. Redirection back to the article for Home on the Road. Entrances. Entering doors or falling asleep in any van or trailer has a high chance of transporting one to this level, especially if such a vehicle looks out of place in its environment. RVs have been found in the following locations, but this is a dynamic list that requires constant updating. Level 9. Level 11. Level 33. 